Quick quack of the naturopath. Thank you for coming back. <clears throat> Let's talk about polyphenols again. Um, look at some of the foods, the best foods in terms of polyphenol content. Okay. So I've drawn up a list here, which we're going to talk about. Probably can't see it. There's all the light reflecting off it. Probably the highest group of polyphenol really uh, would be things like spices. All right. If we look at cloves, the star aniseed, and we look at the turmeric, and we look at like various spices like that, these are exceedingly concentrated sources of polyphenol. So everything I'm going to tell you here is based on per 100 grams. Okay. So if we look at cloves, the spice called cloves, obviously you're not going to eat 100 grams of cloves. You know, you'd probably end up in, in the hospital if you ate that much. You'd be pretty sick. But because the polyphenol content is so high of spices, you only need a tiny little bit to still get a significant amount in your diet. Okay. There you can see why I like adding things like you know cloves and star aniseed and cinnamon and turmeric and these sort of things to my cooking because you're just getting more antioxidants, all right? More polyphenols in your diet. So cloves contain over 15,000 milligrams of polyphenol per 100 grams of cloves. That's a lot of, uh, you know, of polyphenol content. Star aniseed um, is a lot less. We're looking at, at just over 5,000, really, between five to 6,000 milligrams, which is still a lot. <clears throat> Star aniseed is a beautiful spice to, to eat. You might want to have a look at that one. Peppermint is also exceedingly high. <clears throat> Even though it's a high source of salicylates, which for some people are an anti-nutrient and can affect them. Pretty rare though for peppermint to affect people that badly, but I really encourage you to grow peppermint in your garden or in a pot because it makes the most wonderful tea. Um, a nice piece of lemongrass and some peppermint and some boiling water, fantastic cup of tea. So peppermint, 12,000 milligrams of polyphenol per 100 grams of dried peppermint. But if you're gonna have a cup of peppermint tea a day like I do, you're gonna get still plenty of polyphenol in your diet. So that's very high. The second category we look at would be chocolate, dark chocolate, and cocoa. Exceedingly high sources. <clears throat> if we look at dark chocolate, we've got um, three and a half thousand milligrams really per hundred grams of dark chocolate. But once we drop down to the milk chocolate, of course, you know, we're well under half of that amount. So the darker the chocolate and the less junk in it, you know, if it's just plain powder, it's going to have a higher polyphenol content than something that's processed into a food. Right? So chocolate and cocoa, pull right up there with polyphenols, with, you know, the antioxidant value again. If we look at the third category, we're looking at the berry fruits, <clears throat> particularly the purple and the blueberries, okay? Uh, blueberries are, contain around five to 6,000 milligrams of of polyphenols per 100 grams of blueberries. When we drop down to strawberries and raspberries, you know, we're going to drop down uh, exponentially. But always think about that purple, that blue purple color. Uh, that's the one really that you're looking for. So that's the berries. So blackberries, for example, 260 milligrams and blueberries, 560 to 600 milligrams uh, per 100 grams of, of the berry. Now, if we look at the non berry fruit, <coughs> Black currants are in, have got an, in fact a higher polyphenol content than blueberries. Okay, black currants, you may have heard of them, the small round black currant. Exceptionally good source of vitamin C, but also full of flavonoids. So this probably, in my opinion, would be the, the, the pick of the bunch out of this page would be black currants and blueberries. And they actually pair quite nice together when you eat them too. We grow many black currant bushes um, as well as blueberry bushes on our eye section. Um, and they're very nice to add to your, you know, to salads and to foods and things like that. So yeah, that's black currants. And then if we look at the um, other non-berry fruits, we're looking at plums, okay? Especially like the blah, the dark plums, the blue ones, the purple ones. Those are the ones you want to be eating, okay? Between three to four hundred milligrams per hundred grams again. And cherries, we're dropping down to two seventy to three hundred. All right. The beans, <clears throat> category number four, five, beans, black beans, of course, because they're dark again, they've got the highest polyphenol content, also very good fiber content. So beans, people who eat beans, dried beans like I do, like legumes and beans and chickpeas and things like that, tend to have a better gut, in my opinion, a better beneficial flora than people who exclude those foods from the diet. These are good foods for bowel flora. Black beans contain uh, 59 to 60 plus milligrams per 100 grams of beans.
they contain that in, in a polyphenol content. So if we go to the next category, the nuts. Nuts are surprisingly high in polyphenols, I see. Um, if you look at hazelnuts, if you look at pecan, pecans or pecans, whatever you want to call them, hazelnuts have got a very high content, uh, between four to 500 milligrams per 100 grams of nuts. And pecans are around about the same, about four to 500. And again, you're not going to eat 100 milligrams of nuts per day. Okay? You might just eat a few. Remember, always keep the nut consumption to very small amounts, okay? Men are especially crazy. I've seen, you know, patients over the years eat handfuls of nuts per day, and they wonder why they got a bowel problem, right? <clears throat> You only need a few. If we go to the vegetables, it's surprising. Veggies, many veggies contain them, but fruits contain higher polyphenol content than vegetables. Always remember that. Red onions, 170 milligrams. Of polyphenol per 100 gram. Artichoke between 2 to 300. Spinach between 1 to 120, 130 milligrams uh, content. Red onions, of course, contain more polyphenols than the plain onion, the plain white onion. Soy con contains a surprisingly amount of polyphenols. Okay, 100 grams of flour between 4 to 500 milligrams of polyphenols. And tofu contains also you know, 40 to 50 milligrams per 100 grams. I'm a big fan of tofu, but I know a lot of people watching this channel are not soy fans at all, but that's your personal preference. Green tea, also black tea, lots and lots of different types of, you know, antioxidants, polyphenols in these compounds. Anywhere between 70 to 100 or even 150 milligrams plus per 100 milligrams of tea. And red wine, of course, 100 milligrams plus uh, per 100 mils. So just a small amount of red wine per day is enough for many people to get a very good level of polyphenols into their diet. We're not talking about a bottle of wine a day. We're talking about a glass of wine a day. All right? It should keep the doctor away, especially if you have an apple with the wine. All right? Thanks for tuning in.